Hello everyone, welcome to Ketchikan, Alaska. We stopped here on our northbound Alaskan cruise. This is actually the first stop on the northbound cruise originating in Vancouver. Ketchikan is a small town, one of the most southeastern cities in Alaska. It's strange to call it a city, it's really more like a small village. There are a few excursions you can take here. We decided to visit the Wildlife Sanctuary, which is part of the Tongass Rainforest. We also visited the Eagle Center, they call it the Raptor Center. The ship is right in front of the parking lot where the tour buses line up, ready to take everyone on their tours. We had to walk a little to our bus. You can see in the background the snow-capped mountains, and the scenery is just beautiful. Ketchikan is a tiny little village situated at the entrance to Alaska's famed Inside Passage. Our cruise ship will tour the Inside Passage, but our first stop on this northward journey is Ketchikan. We had some time before our tour bus was due to leave, so we browsed around the souvenir shops that are conveniently located, imagine that, right near the ship. Here you can see some jackets at a reasonable price, so if you forgot your warm weather clothes, you have an opportunity to get something here. We took this trip in July and the weather was in the 50s, that's Fahrenheit, but very pleasant, not windy. The tour guide said that it rains most of the time, so we were extremely lucky to have good weather. The bus ride to the rainforest was about a 20 minute ride and the bus driver talked the entire time explaining the history and the lore about Alaska and Ketchikan. I'm going to speed up the ride so we get there a lot faster through the magic of video editing. The bus driver was very interesting, had lots to say, and in no time we were at the rainforest. The drive is around eight miles along the coast. The scenery is very nice if you sit on the right side of the bus. You will be on the coastal side. Here we are at the Alaska Rainforest Sanctuary. As soon as we got there, we were put into a group and our very knowledgeable guide took us on a walk through the rainforest. Let's listen in. And over here we have little baby Western hemlock just starting to spread out. And right over here from the same nurse log we have a larger Western hemlock. And 70% <coughs> of the trees in this forest are Western hemlock. We're going to be seeing him a lot. How to identify him is the branches and the leaves. They look like they're pretty flat. They look like they're coming out at you. Uh, pretty easy to identify from the distance. They look like that. So, Nurse logs are super important for the health of the ecosystem because we don't get fires around here. Fires help to bring nutrients back into the soil. And if a fire broke out here, it would quickly die out. So this is the main way that nutrients get back into the soil. And over here we have the Sitka spruce. This Sitka spruce bark looks more chip-like or more like scales. And this is the state tree of Alaska, fourth tallest tree in the world. Do you guys know what the first tallest tree species is? Uh, more specific. Tallest. Those are the widest. Cypress? Coastal redwoods. Okay. Yeah. So the tallest tree ever recorded was a coastal redwood at 379 feet tall. And these guys come pretty close, at 300 feet tall. There's a native legend about these two trees, the Western Hemlock and the Sitka Spurs. They were in a race to see who can grow tallest, the fastest. This Sitka Spurs won. The Western Hemlock thought of him as a very worthy component. So he forever bows to the Sitka Spurs. And if you look at the top of any Western Hemlock, like this tree right off its path, the top part is folding over, looking like it's bowing down to the Sitka Spurs. So we nicknamed the Western Hemlock the Floppy Top Hemlock. And it kind of smells like a stuff, so that odor is used to attract pollinators like flies. And this is one of the first plants in Alaska to keep out after they wake up from a state of hibernation because it acts as a natural laxative for them. And it works a little bit too well on us, so we do not want to eat it. But black bears, they need it because during that state of hibernation, they don't get out of their den to eliminate waste. They are all clogged up and they need this plant to unclog themselves.
right over here, stage two, another tree growing out of a nurse stump. This nurse stump is slowly decomposing, and as it does that, this tree has to reach out its roots in an attempt to find soil to get the nutrients. And that's why you can see these exposed roots right here. This tree is going to uh, continue to decompose and leave a nice big opening in between the roots. So, stage three is over here. This is stage three. This nurse stump was really tall. And because of how tall that one was, this tree really had to extend its roots to find soil. So because of that, we call this guy the long-legged hemlock. And this nurse stump is still going to continue to decompose and eventually leave a nice big opening in the tree. It's very common to find those openings in trees around here. And that's where black bears like to den, except higher up in elevation and with a much smaller opening. So this guy right here is a banana slug. And banana slug, slugs get their name from that yellowish coloration that you guys can see. They have a unique defense in their slime. And would anybody like to volunteer to be my guinea pig and test out that defense? No. No? All you would have to do is lick it. Uh, no? This is banana. You want to? No? Oh. Um, I mean, you can test it out. Try to see. What happens? Maybe I can convince you guys to change your mind. So, when a predator puts these guys in their mouth, their mouth instantly goes numb. Yeah? Anybody want to try that? No? All you have to do is lick it. Your tongue will go numb for like 30 minutes, <laughs> an hour. So, native Alaskans, they used to use this on babies when they're feeding. And dentists back in the day used this topical anesthetic as well. This right here on the tip of their antenna are the light sensitive eyes. And on the side, maybe he'll open it up for you guys. There's a hole. That is the one hole that does it all. That is how they breathe, reproduce, and eliminate waste. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. Nice. It's opening right now. Yeah. What's it doing? Breathing. Um, breathing pooping. right now. Yeah, I don't think it's pooping. It's all good. <laughs> so these guys can get up to a foot long. And oh, wow. anybody from California here? Oregon. Oregon. This is the University of California um, Santa Cruz mascot right here. The banana, the banana slugs. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> I want you guys to find a leaf that looks like this and rub it and smell it. And tell me what you guys think it smells like. Do our hands go numb? No. <laughs> our nose? No. <laughs> so this is called black currant. Have you guys ever had black currant? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. This is a berry producing plant with four times the amount of vitamin C than an orange. They're also a great indication of a tree that they only grow on dead trees. They are decomposing. So those trees are dead. Here we have this tree. This tree, you guys notice all this white stuff and all this black stuff on this side. This is called pitch. And pitch is similar to sap, except it's a lot thicker, acts as a natural band-aid for the tree. So when it's fresh, it is white, and when it dries, it turns black. So pitch black over here. Yeah. And the reason why this tree has so much pitch is because of all the claw marks coming up and down it. Right here. Uh, you can see some paw marks, even. Oh. Yeah. And that's because the cubs, they like to climb this tree. To play on it or to get away from danger. And do you guys know what the biggest natural threat to cubs are? Humans. Humans, they do kill them, but not natural. Oh. Not natural aspect. Other bears. They don't have a Other bears. Dog. Yeah. The male oh, black bears. bears. Yeah. They will kill the cubs to get with the mom. Mm. They're also a great indication of a tree that they only grow on dead trees. They are decomposing. So those trees are dead right there. So they like to nap during the day. This is an example of a black bear's den. And this would be a great time if you guys would like to take photos. You can get in there. You can act like a black bear. Yeah. Thanks for some really cool photos. <laughs> Anybody want to do that? Yeah. You want to? Yeah. yeah. Uh.
And it is warmer in there than it is out here. Perfect! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> How many bears fit in there? How many bears? Usually bears are solitary, meaning they oh. only one, except if it's a mom. Okay. Mom and her cubs will go in there. Uh, until the mom wants to kick them out. Um, yeah, you know what is Salmonberry, yeah. So this plant right here is salmonberry, and salmonberry does not taste like salmon, despite its name. But the berries, they look like a cluster of salmon eggs. And there's golden, like this one right here, and there's also red salmonberry. And how to identify salmonberry? If the berries aren't theirs, the leaves, they have leaves of three. But they're not poison ivy. Instead, they turn into a butterfly. are edible, but we don't know if anybody's going to have an allergic reaction to them. Um, also, parasites could be inside the berries too. Looking for some brown. So over here we have a fallen down tree that now acts as a nursery for the three main trees that we have at this elevation. And right up top we have the western hemlock. To the side with the roots growing out we have the Sitka spruce. And right over here we have the western red cedar. So the western red cedar, the leaves, they look like this. They are clustered together. They're a lot larger than those of the western hemlock that we saw in the beginning that were had leaves like this and they're individual leaves. These ones are clustered together, kind of look like sail, uh, scales of fish. And the trees around here, they only have about three feet of soil to grow into before it turns to bedrock. So because of that, they don't grow this way instead they grow that way which you can see here and, and this is known as the tree of life like the native alaskans around this region they use all parts of this tree to make clothing um, canoes and totem poles the totem poles outside of our facility are still made from the western red cedar to this day double club so do not touch this plant right here. This is Devil's Club. Devil's Club gets its name from all the spines that run up and down it, even on the underside of its leaves. Mm -hmm. It has spines. And this is a sacred plant to the native Alaskans. All parts of this plant can be used. The spines are used as fishing lures. The bark as deodorant. And the berries were used to treat dandruff and lice. And when burned to charcoal, it was used as a protective face paint for warrior dancers and tattoos and to dye baskets. And among all of those uses, it also has over a hundred different medicinal uses. Known to treat ulcers, diabetes, and arthritis. And right now, it's currently being researched on how it affects different types of cancers and tuberculosis. Yeah, so this is the western red cedar. And you guys come up and feel it. It is super soft. You can rub your hands up and down it. It won't give you any splinter. So cedar has a natural oil that helps keep away pests like moths. So a lot of chests are made out of cedar and closet liners as well. And the branches, however, are covered in moss. That is good for the tree because once the moss gets heavy enough, it causes the branches to fall off and that allows for more nutrients to go up the tree and not be wasted on making those bottom branches. <laughs> so this right here on the trail, this is licorice fern. Licorice fern tastes like licorice and that is how it gets its name. Oh. I'll probably make tea out of it. Yeah, licorice tea. Looks like a sword fern, but I take your word for it. There's a lot of different names yeah. uh, for plants. Like this guy right here, all around here, this is called deer heart, but others know it as false lily of the valley. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful, it's Tastes a shape. similar to spinach, except it's a lot more bitter tasting. Flowers in this thing? Yeah. Oh, there's some bear scat right there. Yeah, look at that. What did you call it? Bear, bear what? Poop. Scat. No, what did you use? Yeah. Scat. Scat? Yeah. Scat. Yeah. It is another name for poop. <laughs> so, <laughs> over here, we have a game trail. Uh, it's a little path where the plants are pushed down from the bears that are around here. 
Because just like people, they don't like getting constantly hit in the face by different plants. <laughs> so they'll walk that same path every day. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. Yeah. Do you have a um, shaga tree? Shaga uh, mushroom tree? No mushroom. Shaga? I don't know. Is that a type of mushroom? Or yeah, it's in the snow. I think it's grows in birch trees. So. Oh, I don't think we have any birch trees around here. So, with the moss, all over this forest we have moss. Moss acts as a natural air filter. And because of all the moss that we have here, we have 95% air purity. Wow. So you guys taking a nice big deep breath and <sighs> breathe in all that beautiful that stuff. Like, huh, yeah. some blueberries. Isn't that oh, this light green stuff? Oh. So that yeah. light green stuff is called old man's beard because it kind of looks like an old man's beard. <laughs> and that is actually a type of lichen. So lichen is a symbiotic relationship between fungus and algae. And it's an example of mutualism where both species benefit from living off of each other. And the fungus acts as a house for the algae and the algae brings in the food, so photosynthesis. Mm. And there is a plant that looks exactly like that and the trees that is a type of moss um it just looks it has the same coloration but it's more clustered together so not in strings and you can see that right there so you see how that one's hanging yeah long strand and then the other one looks like it's clustered it together kind of, yeah that is witch's hair that is a type of moss so old man's beard and witch's hair they get their name from their appearance and over here i think okay. Blueberries. Yeah. Oh, it oh, is. Already. That's already. That's so early. There's so many of them there. So, this right here, uh, oh, you can see more over there. The reason why there's more berries being produced in here, like the salmon berry right there, anybody know? Anybody can guess? Open the area? Yeah, the more sunlight available to them. Okay. And <laughs> this guy right here, this is red elderberry. Have you guys ever had elderberry before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Syrup. And syrup? Elderberry? Syrup? Yeah, and, yeah. And this for immune system? It. Nice. Yes, it's really good for your immune system. Um, but red elderberry you cannot eat because red elderberry, the berries here, they produce cyanide. Ooh. So you don't want to eat those. But the blue and the black elderberry down south in yeah. the lower 48 black states, yeah. you can yeah. definitely eat those. Oh, so there's and a red, blue, and black. Yeah, and those are the three that I know about. So a lot of them are also turned into wine. Yeah. Yeah. Syrups yeah. and um, jams as well. Um, here I'd like to point this guy out so this is the Sitka spruce and at the end of the spruce it has spruce tips these spruce tips contain a lot of vitamin C mm -hmm. and Captain Cook and his crew of explorers they discovered that if you put spruce tips in your beer that it helps to cure scurvy Ooh. So that is thought to be how spruce tip beer was created. Have you guys ever had that? Have you tried that? Not the no? beer, but the beer? Uh, like uh, scurvy. Beer. Beer. Yeah. Beer. I tried only uh, like you know beer. when they babies. Yes. They soft. They can eat those. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like those ones right yeah, there. Babies. Contain a lot of vitamin C. They're really good for you. And the wood of this tree was used in a lot of World War One Allied planes. Um, and. Nowadays, it's used to create different musical instruments, like pianos and guitars. Okay, that's it for the rainforest. We learned a lot on this walk through the Alaskan rainforest. We learned about the western hemlock, cedar trees, huckleberries, elderberries, lichen, moss, and even bear scat. I hope you enjoyed this nature walk video. If you did, please subscribe and comment below if you've been on this excursion. Thank you for watching. Bye.